All right, so we talked a lot about integers. Probably sick of integers. Probably clying out your eyes and trying to poke out your ears. You're done with hearing about integers. We still have more to talk about with integers, by the way. But those will be a little bit down the road. Let's do something fun. Let's learn about while statements. And to learn about while statements, let's start with an if statement. So I'm going to make an int called foo. And let's set it to a value. Set it to three. And if foo is equal to three, then let's print out foo is three. And if we remember back from, a, from the uh, previous videos, what's going to happen here is you're going to get to the if statement. It's going to check to see if this is true. If this is true, then it's going to run the code that's inside of it. And that's all there is to it. And then once it's done, it continues on with the rest of the code. So I do def done. So let's run this. Let's see what happens. So it says foo is three done. I know, super simple, right? Well, a while loop looks almost exactly the same as an if statement. So let's say while foo is equal to three, printf foo is three. Now, this does something new that an if statement doesn't do. And when it gets to the end of whatever code you put inside these brackets, it's going to go back up. It's going to check to see if it's true. And then if it's true, it's going to run it again. And it's going to keep running it over and over and over again until this is no longer true. So once this is false, the while loop will stop. So let's run this. And see, it's printing out foo is three forever. And there's nothing we can do about it. It's just, it's gonna run forever. And if we let it, it's gonna run forever. That's just how it works. And we need to figure out a way to make it stop because that's how it works. It's not a good enough argument for our bosses when the code doesn't work. So let's figure out a way to make it stop. So let's change foo. Let's say foo is equal to two. And so what's gonna happen here is, so foo starts out at three. Three is equal to three. Let's gonna print it out. And once we get down here, we'll set foo equal to two. And then it comes back, it loops back, and it starts again. So now foo is two. And so is two equal to three? Nope, it's not equal to three. So it's gonna stop. And there we go, foo is three. And then foo is no longer three, and it stopped. All right, so this, this is kind of boring. Like, how is this useful? So you can use a while loop to run the same code lots and lots and lots of times, and there's a way that you can control it. And so the way that you typically do this is you start out with a value of zero, and then you say, as long as foo is less than, I'm gonna say 10, then we're gonna print out foo is percent D, foo, yeah, behave. And then foo equals to foo plus one. Okay, so when I run this, we're gonna start out with foo equals zero. So zero is less than 10, so it's true. So it's gonna print out foo is the value of foo, and then it's gonna add one to foo and come back around. And so foo is gonna be one, one is less than 10. Let's print out, add one, come back, foo is two, two is less than 10, and it's gonna continue to do this until foo is no longer less than 10. So if I run it, we get zero, one, two, three, four, five, seven, eight, nine. <laughs> uh, and then done, right? This is just kind of a nice way to know that we've actually completed and we're not stuck somewhere in our code. Well, that's great, right? So we just figured out how to print out a whole bunch of numbers with not a lot of code. Well, what if I wanted to print out more numbers? Well, I just put in a bigger number. If I run it, see, we printed out all these extra numbers. Super great, right? Okay. So that's the basics of a while loop. It's it's super basic, but what else can we do with it? Well, we can combine it with an if statement and do some other things. And so let's say I want to I want to only print out the number 99. Right? So Remember when I'm running this, this is gonna go through all the numbers, but I only wanna print out the, right, let's make it 60. I only wanna print out the number 60. So I can do an if statement here. If foo is equal to 60, print f, yeah, man. Make myself sound like a stoner. And so I run this. 
do this here. So it says, yeah, man. And so this brings us to another important thing about while loops. And that's the order in which the code matters. And it's just like if you if you print out six different things, it's going to print out in the order that it happens. The order in which these all run is what you see on the screen. So in our case, we got to 59. It ran. It printed out 59. It added 159 to make 60. And then it checked to see if it was 60. So if we look at our output here, 59. Yeah, man. And then it went through the rest of the loop. Well, if we wanted to do something even crazier, let's say we wanted to um, tell if the numbers are even or odd. So there's a really cool little thing called a modulo. And a modulo looks like this. It's a percent sign. Um, and we've used these in the format specifiers, but what, what a modulo is, is it's the remainder. So like, let's say you had five divided by two. So five divided by two is equal to two remainder one, right? If let's say you have 10 divided by six, this is equal to one remainder four. With the modulo, it just gives you the remainder. So if I do my, my five divided by two, if I do five modulo two, this is just gonna be equal to one. It's it's the remainder, right? I do the same thing here. Let's do 10 modulo six. And this is gonna be equal to four, right? It's the remainder. And modulo is really important when you get into um, certain types of looping programs. It's it's used a lot in cryptography. Um, it's, a, it's a really important thing to know, even though it may not seem like it. But it also allows us to check if something is even or odd. Oops, behave. And so if you do any number modulo 2, so a number modulo 2 is 1 if odd, 0, 0 if even, right? So like up here, five was odd. We did modulo, modulo two, it equals one, had a remainder of one. If we did six modulo two, this is gonna be equal to zero because six is even. All right, so let's, let's use this to figure out whether or not um, foo is even or odd. So I'm gonna delete this just for now. And I'm gonna move this down here because I made a stink about it and I made a stink about it and I made a stink about it. Okay, so if one is equal to, and then we're gonna put our stuff in parentheses. And this is just like normal math where it runs everything in parentheses first. Um, it's, we'll talk about it more later, but for now, we're just gonna do this. So we're gonna do foo divided by or sorry, modulo two. So remember, this is gonna return a one for all odd numbers, and it's gonna return a zero for every even number. And then we check to see if that value matches. So if it's odd, this is gonna turn into a one, one is equal to one, and it's gonna print out, yeah, man, this is odd, dude. And if it's a zero, then it's just gonna skip it, and then it's gonna increment and move on. So let's run this and see what happens. All right, let's roll up. So foo is zero, zero is technically even, so it doesn't print anything out. Foo is one, yeah, man, this is odd, dude. So one is odd. And all the way down, it's, it's gonna do this. So we can start getting some really interesting behaviors by mixing the different types of if statements and while statements, and there's some even crazier stuff that you can do by putting while loops inside of while loops. And it gets to be a lot of fun. Um, but I'm hitting about my 10 minute mark, which is about my goal. So in the next video, we're going to talk about for loops, which are very similar to while loops, um, but have some extra features in them. So I'll see you then.